Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. Graduates move in together. Landlord gives expired parking permit. Tenant plots revenge by accessing free laundry, costing landlord over $240. The second story. Ex-coworker treated me poorly, plagiarized my job description, and then asked for a job reference at my new company. I refused and warned them. She's unemployed because of me. The third story. Lazy coworker neglected work, so I flooded the place with copies of his task list and made it cold. He started doing his job. On to the first story. The landlord should have just paid the ticket. This takes place back in the summer of 2019. I had just graduated college and me and two of my high school friends decided to move in together. We started looking for apartments and ended up finding one that was in a great location in a big city, and not too far from all of our jobs. Well, we go to meet up with the landlord. I had to drive in from the suburbs to see the place, and the landlord gave me a temporary parking permit. Very nice of him, to use since this area of the city is all permit parking. This is key for later. Aside from some squeaky floorboards, it was perfect. It had three above-sized rooms with a giant balcony, and we were the top floor, second floor. Overall, we were very happy and signed the lease that day. Fast forward a week from the signing and we were beginning to move in. I still had to commute from the suburbs, so I loaded up my car with the intent of staying the night to move everything in. After all, I hadn't used the temporary parking permit the landlord gave me when we were looking at the apartment, since it was a quick 15-minute thing. Well, lo and behold, I come out to my car the next morning after moving in, and I see that my car has a big fat ticket on the windshield. I look at the ticket and under the reason, it states parking permit expired. Now you may be asking yourself, OP, why didn't you check the permit for an expiration date? And that's a good question, likely because I was in a rush and just slapped it on my car and didn't think much more about it. Looking at this ticket and reading more into the reason section, I discovered that the parking permit that the gracious landlord had bestowed upon me had actually expired in 2017, two years ago. Now I think of myself as a reasonable person and if this parking permit had expired a day or two ago, or even the day after I was given the permit, then I would have gone ahead and paid the $70 ticket myself. That, however, was not the case, and I wholeheartedly blame the landlord since I would have still gotten a ticket had I used the permit while I was seeing the apartment. So I reach out to the landlord and explain the situation, and ask for my rent to be credited $70, since it was his fault he gave me a two-year expired permit. To no one's surprise, he refused, called me names, and said that his obligation to provide me a working, <laughs> permit, ended the day of the apartment showing. Long story short, after some back and forth, he agreed to pay half of the ticket and credit it to my rent. Yay! Except I wasn't satisfied, and as a fresh grad, whose job didn't start for another three weeks, I had nothing but time on my hands. So bring on the petty revenge. For the next week I started plotting how I could get the rest of my money back from the ticket debacle with my landlord. But how do you get your money back and not get caught? My dear reader, the answer laid in the washing and drying machines. In big cities, it's common for multifamily apartments to have out-of-unit washer and dryers that all the floors use. Ours was located in the basement, not to mention they're usually not free. As was our case, 175 per load per washer and dryer. Well, one day while I was plodding and shoving my hard-earned quarters into the washer and dryer, I had a light bulb moment. What if I could not pay for laundry? I would get my money back and no one would know. So I rushed back upstairs, did my research on how these machines work. When you select your washer and dryer setting, put the quarters in and push the lever in, there's a switch that gets hit at the back, and boom, the machine starts working. So what did I do? I simply looked up the serial number and manufacturer of the machines, called said manufacturer, impersonated some random landlord saying I misplaced my key fob for the safe box, where the quarters and lever are, on the machines, and would like to know the serial number for the key fob so that I could order a new one. The person I talked to didn't hesitate, gave me the serial number, and I ordered the key fob with expedited shipping off some third-party website that day for $16. I was so excited the day the key arrived that I almost fell down the stairs running to the laundry room. And did my plan work? Without a single problem. I brought some laundry with me, picked my washing settings, and then opened the safe box exposing all the collected quarters, wires, and switch. Now I could have taken the quarters, but I didn't want the landlord to get suspicious. So I decided to leave them be and just have my access to free laundry by pressing the lever and putting the safe box back on the machines. Now you might be wondering, how much money did you actually save? Well, I kept track of every single time I used the machines. 
I wanted to know how much money the landlord was losing, and I wanted to know bad. So at the end of the year lease, I ended up using the washer 68 times, the dryer 70 times, and at $1.75 each time it came out to be $241.50. You might be thinking to yourself, OP, that's only $200 or so, couldn't you have done better? And you'd be right, and I did do better. I ended up letting my roommates in on my secret halfway through the lease, and then ended up leaving them the key after I had moved out. Did I mention they stayed at that apartment for another two years? So Mr. Landlord, you should have just paid the ticket and saved so much time and energy looking for quarters. Edits. Now hopefully I can clear some stuff up. I never said the landlord had ill intent by handing me an expired parking permit, which was a day pass. He likely didn't even know. Like I said, I would have gladly paid the ticket in full if the permit had expired a day, two days, a week, hell even a month ago. But that was not the case. Two years is just willful negligence. Should I have been more careful and check the expiration date? Of course, but I figured if the landlord was confident in the permit's integrity, then that I would still be fine using it for the first time one week later. My mistake in trusting the person I was renting from. What's the landlord doing giving out two-year-old permits anyway? Are there good landlords out there? Yes. Was this a good landlord? No. This landlord owned seven or eight other properties just in the surrounding area that I knew of. He was in no way strapped for cash, not with the prices of rent he was charging anyway. The landlord definitely owned the single washer and dryer in our building. This was a two-floor house. It was not a big apartment complex. Was it petty? Yes. Was it vengeful? Absolutely. So does that mean it belongs in this sub? Petty? Check. Revenge? Also check. Do I regret it? Nope. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Call me what you want, but I think you have to find a name to call the multi-millionaire, probably landlord that's being a stickler to a broke college grad as well. The second story is, ex-coworker that treated me badly wanted me to recommend her for a job at my new company. This happened a few years ago. At my previous employer, I was in a senior position where I trained and allocated work to my two coworkers. Everything was fine at first. We worked together for at least a year when things started to change. I had been there for seven years and they were hired later. Then I decided to go back to school to get my degree and worked out an arrangement with my boss where I could do it. I worked longer hours three days a week, school two days as my degree wasn't offered online. I gave up all my vacation and took a small pay cut. Since my hours averaged out over the year at the minimum required for insurance, I was able to keep that. I only needed to do this for three semesters, as I had previous college hours. It was honestly a sweet deal for me. Cue in the two coworkers. I let them know I was approved to shorten my weekly hours, but didn't tell them any details of pay or anything as that was none of their business. It started gradually, but my coworkers, both women, basically started treating me like SH. Not talking to me, not inviting me to lunch and whispering behind my back, ignoring my presence. The vibes in the room were very hard for me to face as I'm pretty non-confrontational and just want everyone to kumbaya. It was the one in particular, let's call her Patricia, that seemed to be the initiator of this treatment because when she wasn't there, the other lady was nice to me. Some of our other coworkers that did different jobs noticed the treatment and found out that they were jealous of my situation and were taking it out on me. Anyway, I graduated and took a different job at a large and very well-respected company, making almost 50% more. I left that company behind thinking I would never have to interact with them again. A few years go by and Patricia had the nerve to message me on LinkedIn and act all chummy, like we were the best of friends wanting to know how I'm doing, etc. I take a look at her profile to see she's unemployed and looking for work. I assumed she was going to hit me up for a job as we had some openings and I was right. Not only that, she basically plagiarized word for word my job description on LinkedIn from when we worked together. I let it sit for a few days before I replied as I needed to figure out how to handle everything. When I finally replied, it was short and our conversation went something like this. Why are you contacting? You treated me like SH and obviously don't like me. Her reply, no, why would you think that? You taught me so much and I liked working with you. I was hoping you would be a reference on a position I'm applying for at your company. We could work together again. Me absolutely floored at the sheer audacity of this lunatic. You treated me like SH. You plagiarized my job description. You're now gaslighting me. I'll never want to work with you again. You're a horrible person and only being nice to get something from me. Do not apply to that job. In fact, I'm going to write the hiring manager that I personally know an email to beware of you. Never contact me or my company again. I never heard from her again. I didn't know the hiring manager and didn't send an email. I figured the threat of it was good enough. I looked at her profile several months later and she was still unemployed. Edit. When someone asks for a reference, be totally honest. Oh, absolutely, give them my name. I'll tell them everything they need to know about you. 
especially your interpersonal skills. I have very clear memories of my last few months there, and will be very detailed in my impression of you as a worker and as a human being. The third story is, don't do your work list, I'll give you extra work. I used to work at a gas station. I loved that job. You just talk to people all day. This was before pay at the pump. I have tons of stories but won't bore you. What I didn't like was my coworker, Dave. He opened for the day, I closed. Our gas station was part of a hypermarket, similar to Walmart. Our manager would create a work list for the day plus the normal stuff. Whatever wasn't done during the day was mine to finish up. Dave did two things every day, Jack and SH. I was left with cleaning the shelves, stocking product as the day went on. We went through a ton of beer, wine, soft drinks, and cigarettes. Change prices, go to the main store to replenish bread, milk, anything else. Obviously, some things had to be done when there were two people. Others I could do on my own. As part of closing, I had to dip the tanks to measure the fuel and check the water and log that. This was done after we closed. I also had to bring in the displays. We had outside displays of windshield washer fluid, cases of oil, cases and two liters of Coke, Pepsi, etc. The displays were all on small platforms made of wood. You would grab the hand truck, pile it on, wheel it inside, repeat about six or seven times until it's all inside. Then grab the platforms and put them inside. When we dip the tanks, they're sometimes frozen in the winter. So you grab a hammer to chip off the ice. Not dipping the tank wasn't an option. Also, something that's supposed to happen between Dave and his overlap if the manager's not there is a price check. We would drive around to about 10 competitors, check the prices, then call into corporate. Dave wouldn't do it. The overlap didn't have a car, or never got around to it, so I did that too. Dave reversed this process in the morning. Every day when I came in, Dave was already gone. I would ask an overlapping coworker about the list. They would have done some SH, but the bulk of it was undone. All for me to do. If I did happen to see Dave, I would ask him why he didn't do anything. His response was always, I didn't see it. Here comes the petty revenge. Once bitter winter evening, I hadn't had enough. I grabbed the work list and made about 10 copies of it. I put one copy in each fuel lid and poured a bucket of water on each lid. Then I brought in the displays and restacked them on top of the platforms inside the store. I stuck a copy of the list to his time card. We had a punch in, punch out. I taped a copy to a couple of the cooler doors. I stuck one in the cash register. I put the hand truck in the cooler and removed a cotter pin from one of the wheels. I cranked the air conditioning as low as it would go and opened the cooler doors. When I came in the next day, the displays were there, but the bases were put away in the back. Dave didn't feel like unstacking, then restacking. The next time I saw him, we had a good laugh. He said that the windows of the store were frosted. He had to wear gloves to use the hand truck because it was so cold. He had to find a paper clip for the wheel after it fell off moving a stack of oil. He did manage to dip all the tanks, but it took him a bit longer than usual. He started doing some of the work list after that. I hope you love these stories. Subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching and have a good day.